everybody thank you for joining me today and bonjour à les amis en Quebec hello to you as well I saw you you guys are the first ones in there thank you for joining me today my name is Chelsea Mann I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professional and this is Hacker Hoax episode 3 food can be used as hair products uh, so if you if this is the first time you've joined us for Hacker Hoax uh, this is sort of something that uh, I started doing um, at the beginning of uh, sort of COVID lockdowns and I wasn't sure that it was gonna sort of catch fire or any of that stuff. I thought maybe it would only be one episode, but this is episode three, so I'm very excited that you guys are keeping it going. So um, so yeah, thank you so much for that, and thank you for Wella Canada West for having me. So today we're gonna to talk about food as hair products, okay? So I'm sure we've all heard this before. I'm sure we've all heard all kinds of crazy things that people do and put in their hair to make it soft and shiny, and does it work and does it not work, and should we be recommending this, shouldn't we be recommending this? So we're gonna do some live experiments today we're going to look at some stuff if you guys have watched a few uh, either of my other episodes of hacker hoax you'll know that uh, i like to do sort of experiments uh, as we sort of go here so uh, with my team the cardinal rule um, is don't do experiments live on instagram that you haven't tried already and know what's going to happen um but today we're going to break that rule because i haven't tried a few of these things yet so it could go wildly wrong stay tuned for my nightmare who knows um, but thank you for joining me. Um, so is the idea that you can use food in hair, as a hair product going to be a hack today? Or is it a hoax? What do you guys think? You can throw it up into the comments and I want you guys to know that there's some of my team in the comments today. You guys can throw your questions up in there uh, if you want to. I, I know that there's a few people from my team are already there. Um, so they'll answer your questions. There's also at the very bottom of your screen right there, maybe today's the day I get it. And there's a little chat um, thought bubble that has a question mark in it. So if you have questions, you can throw them up there as well. Uh, and I'll get to them as soon as I possibly can, okay? Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about uh, sort of was the history of using food in hair. So I got a little nerdy guys and did probably an excessive amount of research for this uh, live and it sort of sent me down a little bit of a historical rabbit hole, you know, um, I have found that there, you know, there's so much information out there about the history of, of shampoo and soap and how these things sort of came to be. Um, so I won't launch into all of that and make you guys listen to me talk about the history of shampoo. Um, but food in hair guys or food as hair products certainly has a rich history, uh, you know, throughout uh, throughout the world. So, you know, we've seen, uh, throughout history, we've seen people wash their hair uh, with lye, which is now to us, like you saw, like it's cringeworthy for us, right? Like you would never, it's such a hardcore uh, cleaner. Like lye is in the things that you would like clean rust off of stuff, you know what I mean? Like we're not going to use that to wash our hair anymore. Um, you know, we've seen, in, you know, historically a lot to do with washing your hair uh, was to do with keeping smells away, right? So uh, in the middle ages when people, yeah, beer, I agree, Nick, what a waste. Um, but even in, it's funny in my research, um, you'll find people into like, you know, the 1940s and the 1950s who are still alive today, who remember being, you know, bending over a bathtub and having a beer poured onto their hair, right? So it's, uh, it was an interesting bit of research. But in the Middle Ages, we found, uh, my research found that, um, you know, you had people in the Middle Ages who were less concerned about washing their hair um, and more concerned about not having their hair smell, right? So uh, a lot of times, you know, during that period of time, we were seeing people sort of shaving their hair off to, you know, not have head lice, things like that. We saw a lot of wigs, a lot of powdered wigs. That's, you know, you move into sort of Victorian era and things. But um, a lot of it was about smell. And we are going to talk a little bit about smell today as well. Um but it was less about washing your hair, conditioning your hair, um, and more about, uh, you know, odor management, I guess, right? Um, and then once people started washing their hair, you know, more of, uh, you know, sort of a more modern, a more modernistic sort of society, a more enlightened society, um, started washing their hair for the health benefits of that, because there was a point in history where it was a, a well-known uh, fact, they thought at the time, that bathing was detrimental right? 
Um, so once people started washing their hair more, then we started to see a lot of sort of food in hair. We started to see almond oil. We started to see um, other sort of oils that were made from different seeds going into people's hair because they were washing their hair more. Then they started to, you know, want to see, um, want to see their hair also feel healthier, right? Uh, so that's sort of where the putting food into the hair sort of you know, evolved from. And now in more modern products, we see derivatives from things that you could eat, right? Uh, we see a uh, sense of things that, you know, exist in nature and also made into food. So there's, uh, you know, I, again, I'm not going to spend this whole time talking about the history of washing hair, although for nerdy people like me, it's quite interesting. I know Nichelle's on right now, and I think she might watch a live based on the history of how shampoo evolved, but we're not going to spend the whole time talking about that, guys. But I did want to just make the point that putting food in your hair for um, for its nutritional abilities or its moisturizing abilities isn't a new thing, right? This is something Something that sort of permeates, uh, you know, sort of history, right? Um, but now in modern days, why do people do this? This is always my thought. I'm always watching people put certain things like Cardi B on her Instagram story. I think yesterday was making a mask out of food ingredients for her daughter. Um, and I, I got to thinking like, why are people doing this? And I think that there's a few reasons. First of all, right now, super relevant, COVID. Right. I, you know, in some where I live, guys, I'm coming at you uh, from uh, northern Alberta uh, where I live. Our salons are open. Our retail stores are open, things like that. But there are parts of the world. There's parts of Canada still that are, you know, locked down. Maybe people can't get out and get their products that they need to. Uh, so they're looking stuff up online. And we also, you know, in lockdown, guys have more time on our hands. Uh, more time than I is probably <laughs> good for us. I know I, you know, being locked down as well, we, you know, ran out of things to do very quickly. Um, but I think COVID plays a part, right? Uh, that we just are more apt to experiment or maybe can't access the things that we normally would use. The second reason I came up with was w with for why people put food in their hair as treatments or whatever um, is allergies. Okay, because one of the components that when I, I talked to my team about what uh, I could do for this live um, we talked a lot about allergies and maybe that's the reason why some people use certain ingredients, but when it comes to color, cause I'm going to run an experiment today involving these guys, um, you know, that has to do with color. So why does, do you think people put things in their hair that are food instead of regular color, right? So, you know, we could probably talk about that from a budget standpoint. We could probably talk about it from an accessibility standpoint uh, as well. Um, but I think the allergy piece is, is a good one that some people are just really allergic or sensitive to certain ingredients that are found in all kinds of different professional products that they want to go a different direction, okay? Um, budgetary is also another one. And I think the other reason why you know, I watched, I, as I mentioned earlier, I watched Cardi B's uh, Instagram story with her making her daughter a hair mask out of, I think she was using avocado and honey and mayonnaise and eggs and things. And there are certain, you know, moisturizing uh, qualities to those things. They're more, some people see them as more natural, right? Um, I also think there may be a cultural element there that sometimes if you grew up with your mother doing these certain things to your hair, it just sort of sticks, right? It's just something that, you know, we've always done and, um, you know, kind of always will do, right? Um, so yeah, I think those are some of the reasons why people do this, okay? Now, but today, guys, I think you're going to see, I'm really going to make, I'm going to attempt anyway, to make the point that these things are sort of, you know, unnecessary in modern times, right? Um, if you want to be somebody who moisturizes your hair with eggs and mayonnaise, I'm in no position to tell anybody how to live. You are free to do that. Um, but there are certain reasons why we don't use certain things. We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to dispel some myths today about putting, um, food in hair um, and we're going to talk about you know why we shouldn't be doing uh, the lion's share of these things okay um, so the first demo I want to do guys is probably the biggest one and I'm going to start with this because it needs to sort of it needs some time to, to get going I've been seeing this happen guys as a colorist I've been a colorist for a really long time I've been seeing people do this since the day I started doing hair um, and I it always shocked me as to why the um, and it has to do with kool-aid why do people color their hair with Kool-Aid? I will never understand this, okay? But we're gonna try it today, okay? Where I've seen Kool-Aid sort of manifest in my career as a colorist, of course I've had people come and say, you know, come to me and say, hey, you know, my 12 year old 
colored her beautiful natural blonde hair at her friend's house with Kool-Aid and now I can't get it out, you know? Fun fact, I also can't get it out. It's a, If you've never tried it, guys, Kool-Aid is actually really hard to remove from the hair, so you just be prepared for that one. Um, but I think a lot of times when people have put Kool-Aid in their hair, it's a, it's a budgetary thing, or sometimes people just panic. They're like, my hair's the wrong color. You know, I can, I, they Google it, maybe they ask on a Facebook group, and then they end up with Kool-Aid in their hair. So we're gonna use our color wheel today and we're gonna try some stuff, okay? So the first one I pointed out is this guy, Purple Kool-Aid. Now, before anybody says it, I tried everything I could. I went to a million different stores trying to find powdered Kool-Aid. Like I remember when I was a kid, the packets and you put it in the pitcher and your mom stirs it with the wooden spoon. Couldn't find it. So we're going with these guys, okay? So I've got my Wella glass here with my purple. I squeezed that entire purple thing into here, okay? It's very dark, okay? Which anybody who's in, been in any of my uh, classes will tell you I talk a lot about how strong blue pigment is very dark okay because purple is a secondary color violet is a secondary color that's part blue and part red okay so we're going to take our purple kool-aid and imagine that you had somebody who had hair that was this color okay that it either pulled this color maybe they've done their own hair at home and it's this color okay maybe they googled it and they said oh i'm gonna uh somebody on on this facebook group said i should try you know try this with kool-aid well, let's sort of see what happens here. So I'm gonna put this guy in here. We're gonna swirl him around. Oh, it's already turning a weird color. So, okay, so there's a, my hair swatch is in there. Oh, <laughs> it's already turning a weird green color. Okay, so we're gonna leave that one in there, okay? This is more fun than it looks, guys. So that's the purple one with the yellow swatch in it. Next, orange, okay? Christmas Easter Oilers, guys, which, what goes with this one? blue okay so again maybe we've got some fashion colors in there maybe somebody's trying to fix their own hair at home who knows okay we've got our wella glass with our orange kool-aid in there let's throw that guy in let's see we're gonna swish him around i'm interested to see with this one especially because it's not so dark a color in the glass but you can see it's already sort of changing the color of the kool-aid yeah and i haven't diluted this kool-aid either guys it's just straight from the container into the glass so we're gonna leave that guy there. Next up, red Kool-Aid, okay? Christmas Easter Oilers. And this isn't the only red experiment I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, do, guys, so stay tuned. We've got a green swatch, okay? With my red Kool-Aid, really, really gross, really, really graphic, sorry about that one. Uh, we're gonna put this guy in here. Oh, hold on, he got stuck. I'll put him in there and see. Now the green one, guys, I will say on the Facebook groups, the hairdresser Facebook groups that I'm on, is the one I see happen the most, where I see people ask questions about my client turn their own hair green, because it is pretty easy to do if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and then they tried to fix it with Kool-Aid, okay? So we've got that. And then last but not least, now, again, I remember very vividly as a kid, guys, drinking green Kool-Aid, and I couldn't tell you what it tastes like. It just tasted like green, you know? But I couldn't find it either, but I did find this guy. This is Green Mio, which will do the same job, okay? And I've got us a red swatch. We're gonna go the other way, okay? So I'm gonna take my green Mio and put my red swatch in it. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a little twirl around. Now we're gonna let these guys sit, okay? And I'm gonna come back to this because I wanna let them sit for a few minutes and see how she goes, okay? That, I'll tell you right now, that purple one's gonna do something interesting, okay? Um, so there we go. Kool-Aid, experiment, running, okay? So the other thing, um, another thing that I thought was interesting that I saw and I hope you guys have seen um, online is people uh, have this obsession with tomato based products in hair color or in hair and it, tomato based food products in hair. I think it's interesting because there's an obvious color component to this where people are recommending the Kool-Aid situation or the tomato uh, based product situation because I think it's um, because it's obvious that they have pigmentation in them like no no drink naturally is this color. You know what I mean? So it obviously has artificial pigment in it, but then stand to reason, if you can get to the space where you're like, I need to use artificial pigment to do it, and I know what color that artificial pigment should be, why are we still using Kool-Aid? Why not just use actual hair color? Mm. But on that tip, if we're using tomato-based products to cancel out green in somebody's hair, I've watched people recommend this for when somebody does a lot of swimming and their blonde hair turns slightly green, 
or when somebody tried to color their own hair at home and maybe they did henna and then tried to remove it and it turned green. I've seen this happen, okay? So I did another green swatch and I bought myself a can of tomato juice. Just classic Heinz tomato juice, guys. I'm hoping not to snap a nail here. So I'm gonna open this guy up. It is real tomato juice, guys. No tricks here, okay? So we're gonna pour some of that into my Wella glass, okay? Green swatch into the tomato juice. Let's find out what happens. Now, in theory, to, uh, not in theory, in reality, tomatoes are red. Well, I mean, they come in a variety of colors, but they are red. Um, so whether or not this has artificial color in it, to be, to be completely honest with you, I didn't look, uh, but I'm interested to see sort of what happens here. The other element here, guys, and I talked a little bit about it before, is smell, right? So I don't, you know, full disclosure here, guys, I don't think any professional in their right mind is gonna do any of these things, right? Um, but if you did, wouldn't there be a smell? Like I'll tell you, I'm in my studio right now. From this, this that, those Kool-Aid uh, things sat out here for a little bit, maybe an hour or so before while I was prepping, or maybe two hours, and it smells real fruity down here now. So that's a good smell, but if you're putting like, tomato juice into somebody's hair like that's not so great of a smell all the time you know so I think it's another thing to sort of consider right um so I want to while these are sort of for lack of a better term sort of processing I want to go back to a point I made uh before okay and this has to do with the at-home hair masks okay at Wella Professional we we have done very deliberately to make sure that uh we have a robust um, offering of hair masks and treatments and things you can be doing in the salon uh, for a variety of different reasons, okay? So we've got our Wellaplex treatments um, that are meant uh, to be reparative, okay? We've got our moisture treatments and our nutrient rich. We've got color balancing uh, treatments in color motion and brilliance. We've got more repair treatments in Fusion Plex. I could keep going, guys. We have so many offerings for in salon services, okay? So my advice to you for in salon services, if you have a client who comes in and swears by their at home hair mask, the best way to beat it, guys, in my opinion, the best way to gain that client for their care needs as well as their maybe their color needs or whatever, the best way to tear them away from that at home experience is to really create a bespoke or curated experience for them in the salon. Allow them to take a service menu, maybe that you've put in your waiting area or you know wherever they may be hanging out, um, or on your website. Uh, you know if uh, if um, clients aren't waiting in your salon right now, um, create that service menu and reach out to your distributor uh, partner. Reach out to your Wella rep. We're here to help you guys. Your educator like me slide into my dms i'm happy to help create a service menu where a client could select what they want you know off of that menu or at least they'll be able to come to you and say hey i saw that service menu that you have all of these care options uh what do you think would be right for me and then you can curate a service that makes sense for them in the wella portfolio guys we have a bajillion different offerings and different combinations that you really can curate a service that makes sense for that client that they can really say wow this is something that was really made for me okay because at home they can free pour their mayonnaise and add as much apple cider vinegar as they want to their hair right they can have their own little at home spa day so you know if we're trying to balance against that we really want to offer them a curated service in the salon okay so i wanted to uh talk a little bit about like culture around homemade hair masks i'm hoping somebody out there other than me watches 90 day fiance because if you do um you have seen somebody uh named big ed um do this at home hair mask um on himself right and he he talks about how he's got sensitivities and things like that and this helps his hair look moisturized but he's not allergic to it which i fully understand and respect guys but there's options out there for clients that have scalp sensitivities uh, in the Wella portfolio. We have treatments, um, you know, in our uh, Sensocom range and things like that that are curated for it in our Nioxin range uh, that are curated for people that have sensitivities as well. OK, so again, reach out to your rep. But, you know, when I got to thinking about this, I, you know, sort of Googled some of the ingredients and this is mayonnaise. OK, so when I looked up. And I'm gonna make one of these little masks here because I wanna see sort of the consistency of it and how it smells and all that. So when I Googled, you know, mayonnaise and hair, it talked a lot about like moisturizing, um, 
moisturizing capabilities and reasons like for that. And I think that's the primarily why people like to put mayonnaise um, in their hair is because they believe it moisturizes their hair. Now, my point is that does it moisturize their hair as well as a, a curated sort of bespoke in salon service? Is it is it as an enjoyable an experience, um, you know, when you pair it with a blowout or things like that? Uh, certainly not. OK, um, the next one I Googled is honey. So this is just regular honey. Let's see if I can get this to come out of here. Now, see how sticky this is, guys? Imagine putting that in, the, in your hair and what would happen, right? That's why we, when people do it at home, they got to mix it in with stuff. I also spoke with somebody online doing research for this who does this all the time. And she was saying she heats up the um, honey to get it to be, you know, a better consistency for her. So again, you know, Googling what, why people put honey in their hair, uh, is there's an antioxidant component to it and there's a few other things. Um, but guys, when I look at it, I'm going to put one more ingredient in this, but when I look at this mixture, all I see when I look at this is clogged follicle sites. You know what I mean? I feel like this is just going to like really muck up your scalp. You know, while it may be, oh, the smell of this is really gross. While it may be, uh, you know, I couldn't comment either way on whether or not this is good for your hair because I've never done it to my own hair, but I feel like this will certainly muck up your scalp. And this mayonnaise is sort of curdling in a weird way, but, um, but yeah, and it has a weird smell. Okay. So now the next thing, the last thing we're going to add to this particular one. Now, um, this recipe that I'm going from here also has apple cider vinegar in it. And I don't know if you guys have ever smelled apple cider vinegar in it, but it's quite like tart. Okay. It's, it has a very, it has a vinegary appley smell as you would imagine, but it's quite sort of tart. Right. Um, but the, the reason that we don't put vinegar in our hair of any kind, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, regular white vinegar, um, is because if you put too much of it in or it stays on your scalp for too long, it can burn you. Okay. Uh, so we need to be careful of that. If this is something that you're going to do again, uh, I could tell you outside of an allergy, every treatment that well carries will not burn you. <laughs> so to me, that's a pretty good trade off, right? So the last thing that I saw people putting into their hair masks was this guy. So this is an egg, obviously. So we're going to put this guy in here and see sort of what happens. Now, again, guys, I've never done this to my own hair. I would never do this to my own hair. I have access to a really beautiful range of products and well professional that obviously supersedes all of this. Um, but you know, there's an egg in it, right? So we're going to sort of mix this up. Now this is sort of changing the consistency of this guys. It's sort of making it much more runny. When Cardi B did this the other day on her Instagram story, uh, she added an avocado, which sort of thickened it up, but oh yeah, again, the smell of this guys, not super great. Okay. So, um, I think all the way around do once I did all of my research and sort of looked at some of this, could I say that some of these ingredients have beneficial qualities to, to your hair. Sure. But when it comes to insulin experiences, guys, when it comes to sort of creating a, not a battle, but creating a way that we can sort of fight against clients doing these things at home, we really do that with the experience and the experience that a client gets in the salon when they're, you know, with a professional and when, you know, things smell nice and feel good and they're taken care of. That's really how we do these, how we sort of triumph over these sorts of at home things. Okay. Uh, and because then your hair, your hair won't constantly smell like, uh, like big Ed so eloquently said on 90 day fiance, an egg salad sandwich. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about guys, and I'm going to come back to my Kool-Aid experiments in a second. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, was a fun little one that one of the girls on my team talked to me about that she had heard. I put it out to my team and said, you know, what have you guys heard people say that they like weird stuff, like food stuff they put in their hair. And one of the girls on my team said that she's seen people use Coca-Cola as a volumizing spray. So I got my Wella spray bottle out here. I'm going to open this guy up. Oh, there you go. I'm going to pour him into, I don't drink pop. Otherwise I would drink some of this to prove it to you, but I just unsealed it in front of you. So you guys can believe me. Okay. So we're going to pour some of this into here. Whoa. Overflow. There you go. 
So that's something we learned today too. Pop will behave exactly the same when you're pouring it into a spray bottle as it does when you're pouring it into a glass. You're welcome, okay? So now I'm gonna put my lid of my spray bottle on and we're gonna use this, I, I know you guys can't see it, but I'll move her into the frame in a second. I'm gonna use this um, mannequin that I took out and we're gonna try to volumize her with some Coca-Cola spray, okay? Let's try this. So I've got my girl here. Okay, so she's already had a little bit of a, a GHD uh, curve style going here, okay? But I'm going to give her a little bit of a blowout after I spray some of this into it, okay? Now you can see, guys, that she's got a little bit of wave pattern down here, but she doesn't really have any volume up top, okay? Sometimes you got to lean on them, okay? So I'm just going to take a little bit of a section here. We're going to spray. There's the Coca-Cola. <laughs> Ooh, fragrant. Okay, so we're gonna spray some of this in here oh, in a few sections. And I'm gonna see if we can get some volume out of it. Now again, guys, I obviously would never do this to a client, but I think it is kind of fun. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, inhaling that Coca-Cola, it'll get you. I think it is kind of fun to see if these things actually work. So I've got my beautiful GHD blow dryer. If you guys haven't tried these, they're really, really fantastic. And I've also got my GHD round brush. So I'm gonna crank her up here a little bit and see if we can get some volume. If you guys can see there. Just gonna do a couple of sections here and see if this actually works. So we can get volume out of Coca-Cola spray. Now, I don't know what the theory is behind this, guys. This was something that somebody on my team told me that they saw and had seen, had had somebody say it to them in the past, um, but I don't know if it actually worked. And I'm not sure what the, if it did work, what the ingredients are in it that sort of make it work. You know what I mean? So I'm doing my best to sort of pull it away and help it out a little bit, pull it away from the scalp. I will tell you that it seems from the way this is going, that it's creating a bit of stickiness in the hair. And it seems to also be creating some oiliness <laughs> in the hair. Yeah, it's not allowing my brush to go all the way through. Yeah, see how I'm like stuck? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think officially guys, yeah, we're gonna let that go. <laughs> I think officially guys, maybe we can call the Coca-Cola as a volumizing spray a hoax, okay? Uh, because yeah, this is sticky now um, and it's, we would have to wash this. Now I'm going to have to wash this mannequin. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that to my own hair like I had originally planned. There you go. Uh, so yes, guys, Coca-Cola as a volume spray. Hoax, okay? Um, so before I bust out my Kool-Aid in my tomato juice experiment, guys, just wanted to talk a little bit about one other thing. Oh yeah, Nick, I bet you it is a sugar content in the uh, Coca-Cola because it's it would make sense for the stickiness for sure. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about baking soda. Okay. So somebody else on my team said to me, I heard that baking soda is a, is really great as a dandruff cure is really good as a dandruff cure. And I thought, Hmm, because I bake a lot. Okay. So those of you that follow me on Instagram, you can see all of the things that I like to do as far as baking is concerned. I go through baking soda quite a bit. Um, and I use it to clean and things as well. Like, uh, you know, I, I grew up with a mom who washed the floors with water and vinegar and use all kinds of natural things to clean the house. So baking soda is just something that's sort of an all around thing in my house. Uh, but it never occurred to me, uh, that it would be a dandruff cure. So I looked it up online. I did a little bit of research. I found some very biased articles about, <laughs> about, um, about baking soda, but as a dandruff cure specifically, guys, I was very surprised to find uh, that there's some very credible sources out there that will tell you that baking soda is actually uh, a way to get rid of dandruff, which seems like good news, okay? But the bad news, guys, is that baking soda also uh, is very drying for your scalp. Um, so it seems, and it also has the capacity to burn you. Exactly, Nick, there you uh, took the words right out of my mouth, right? So it messes with your pH. It has the ability to to burn you and do damage to your scalp. So while in the short term, uh, you know, baking soda may get rid of dandruff that you maybe currently have, 
Um, it can, at the very same time, even with one time of using it like that, can do some pretty nasty damage, okay? And like, again, look it up online, guys. You guys will see all kinds of information, you know, pro and con. Uh, but in this case, I found, to be completely honest, guys, I found a lot of pros about this. Like a lot of people saying good things. Although, I, again, I still can't get past the smell thing. Um, but you'll find that it, online there's very few pros about baking soda in hair and many, 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 many cons, okay? So I wouldn't go there with, uh, with baking soda, okay? So let's take a look at our experiments. Let's start with the purple guy. Now, again, guys, the cardinal rule on my team is we don't do things online that we haven't already like demoed. Um, but I don't know what's about to happen here. So, although I'm pretty sure with the purple being as strong as it was, I know what is about to happen, but so I'm just taking what was our yellow, our bright yellow swatch out of the, oh gross, out of our purple Kool-Aid. Wait till you guys see this. I'm just going to grab my beautiful YS Park comb. Look at, so this was bright yellow before. Okay. What a gross color. It smells very grapey though. That's something. Um, so yes, this was bright, uh, like future yellow, yellow before, you know, 2021 Pantone color of the year yellow. Okay. I put it into a uh, pure violet Kool-Aid concentrate and that was in there for what? 20 minutes guys, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And now it's green. So this is, although this is a super fail and we would never want anybody to do this to their hair, I think the color theory here is interesting, guys, right? That we see something that was so dark and so purple, right? But now we've got, we put it onto a yellow swatch and now we've got green, okay? So for those of you out there that are wondering, well, that color wheel doesn't make any sense when you say it like that, okay? Purple violet, guys, is a secondary color. It is part blue and part red, okay? So that in this case, and in most cases, this turned green because it was bright yellow and then put into something that was predominantly blue with some red to make it violet, and then it turned our swatch into green, okay? Now, I'm not doing it on this lab, guys, simply because there's a limit to how long Instagram will let me go for. Um, but I would also venture to say, and maybe I'll keep these and we can try it on another live, but I would also venture to say I wouldn't be able to get this out, okay? I have found in my career uh, trying to remove artificial sort of food grade pigments like this is very difficult, okay? So let it be known to your kids and all that kind of stuff. Don't color your hair with Kool-Aid. It's a bad idea, okay? So that was the yellow swatch. Let's move on to my orange one, okay? So this was the orange Kool-Aid concentrate. Again, uh, Christmas Easter Oilers, the blue swatch went in this. Now, <coughs> excuse me, it's so dry in Alberta. Um, now, you guys will see, um, again, that, <coughs> excuse me, that blue pigment is quite strong, right? <coughs> so, we may not see a ton of results. Oh, well, I'm going to eat my words. We're going to see some results here. So I think when I show, I'm just combing it, guys. When I show this to you, you're going to see that it's still blue because I will maintain and go back to what I've said from the beginning, that that blue pigment is always really, really strong. It's our you know strongest primary. We It will rear its ugly head, right? So this is still blue. But do you see how you guys remember what it, I should have done more than one of these swatches? Do you remember before how, do you remember before how like bright electric-y blue it was? And now it's more of this sort of like navy color, okay? The good thing from this lesson, guys, <coughs> excuse me, is that there's many different colors of neutral. I think people get stuck sometimes when they're trying to neutralize hair. They get stuck that it has to be brown or it has to be, you know, devoid of any sort of undertone. I think this proves, you know, that we could use neutralization to kind of take the edge off of things because this certainly isn't as bright a blue as it was it's more of a denim -y blue now um, but it's certainly still blue right real world salon guys if you have somebody who ha whose hair is too blue you're not going to use orange to neutralize it you have to lift the color out you know we have to get rid of that blue you can't just neutralize it okay all right, so we're going to move on to our red okay so this is the kool-aid that i used for this one Sorry guys, I like a dryness in my throat here. And tomato juice. So we use the red Kool-Aid, Christmas Easter Oilers. There's a what there's what was a green swatch in here, okay? 
So for those of you that are Wella users, I colored this green swatch with Wella Color Fresh Create Never Seen Green. Okay, so if you have a swatch book, you can look up the color in there. Ooh, this is interesting as well. Talk about neutralization. You guys can look up the color in there if you want to see it. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm never going to get this pigment off my hands. Um, but this one has been weird. It's got some neutralization to it, but it's also got some spots that are more red and some spots that are more green, right? Very odd. And some that's even more neutral, right? And I think the lesson here, guys, is in predictability, right? I think one of the biggest, one, you know, clients do this stuff to themselves at home and come for, you know, come to us for, uh, you know, for us to fix it, which is fine. You know, I will certainly take those color corrections all day. I love doing corrective color. Um, but I think when it comes to something like this, you really want to have that predictability. You know what I mean? While we can take that, um, you know, that red pigment and neutralize some of that green, why not do it in a predictable way, in a way that you can look at it and say, you know, I'm pretty sure how this is going to happen and what's going to happen here. And I'm not going to end up doing something twice and only getting paid once, right? Okay, so last but not least for my Kool-Aid experiment, this is the green one. Now this is the one, if you guys remember that I couldn't find the green Kool-Aid. I don't know if they don't make it anymore or anything, uh, but this was the Mio. So it'll be interesting to see if it was, uh, you know, if the pigmentation is different in the Mio. Um, but again, guys, these, uh, I think the other lesson here is that food grade sort of color pigmentations. These are all artificially colored uh, drink mixes. Um, it is very different than the pigmentation that we put into hair color, right? So this swatch, guys, when I put it into the green liquid, was red. And now it's green, right? So do you see how strong that green pigment is compared to the red that's in there? It's just too much. And again, there's no way that a client came to you or looked at their own red hair and was like, I super wanted this, like, forest green color if they were hoping for neutralization they have just made it worse right so again i'm very aware guys that these aren't things that you would do in the salon to a client's hair but this is also a really great way for them to see why they shouldn't do these things to their own hair you know the when you turn your hair one of these weird colors with kool-aid oops there was one if when you turn your hair one of these weird colors with kool-aid guys you're going to end up in a hairstylist chair getting it corrected anyway so you might as well let us do it in the first place and maintain nice, beautiful, healthy hair rather than having this like sea monster sort of situation that we can fix. Uh, but really, in the end, was it worth it? Um, OK, so last but not least for my experiments, guys, uh, this is the tomato juice. OK, so this is the tomato juice with the green um, swatch in it. OK, so this is the one that I see a ton online. I see a ton of people going you know, my, my, I've been swimming, my hair's green, what do I do? And then somebody in the comments is always tomato juice, tomato sauce. And I'm just like, why? You know, and I get, I get that it's, you know, these things have artificial pigment in them, but we don't put food in our hair. It's not a good idea, you know? Go and have a hairdresser fix it, okay? So let's take this guy out. Ooh. He's all twisted up. Give me a second here, guys. Ooh. Okay, it kind of smells like an airplane down here. I don't know why people always drink tomato juice on airplanes, but it smells like an airplane down here now. Okay, so <laughs> interestingly enough, this, oh, it's got tomato juice chunks in it that I can't comb out. Okay, so swatch, still green. So super fail on this one, guys. It did nothing. At least the Kool-Aid deposited something. Completely unpredictable in Swamp Monster colors, but at least it deposited something. Um, but yeah. This, and look at it, it's got chunks of tomato juice stuff in it, right? We don't wanna do that. Let's, let's not do this to each other, okay? So I would say that I think our food experiments um, have failed, okay? Um, and I wanted to say to you guys before uh, I sort of close up here, I really wanted to sort of talk about the elephant in the room, okay? When it comes to putting food uh, in your hair, the elephant in the room is this guy, okay? This is coconut oil. <laughs> And people ask all the time to me about coconut oil. Well, do you, you know, do you recommend coconut oil? Should I put coconut oil in my hair? Should I put it on my skin? What should I do? Um, and my answer to that is always no. My answer to that is always no. And I know that there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, certain reasons why, you know, different types of different hair types use coconut oil in their hair. And that's okay too. You know, I think that if you have something that, 
has moisturizing capabilities and things like that, uh, you know, you should do you. I'm not in a position to tell anybody how to live. However, from a professional standpoint, right? Coconut oil, um, I'm not gonna launch into the big scientific um, explanation for it. You guys can find that online. It's the same explanation every website you'll go to. And it has to do with where coconut oil is able to, when you put it into your hair, where it's able to uh, travel into your hair and what it's able to do. Essentially guys, the, the, the short version of a long story, the cold notes version, um, is that if you're using coconut oil in your hair, uh, while it may give you sort of instant gratification, it may, uh, you know, help your hair feel better, like pretty immediately, um, it's going to soak into your hair and prevent any other products that you're using from being able to make a real difference. So if you're using prolonged like coconut oil on your hair, if you go to do a, um, you know, a reparative treatment or some other treatment that, you know, are actually stuff you should be putting in your hair, the coconut oil used in the past is going to prevent that treatment from being able to work, right? So you got to sort of balance that out. Do we want to have that instant gratification um, or do we want to sort of long term take care of our hair? Okay. Uh, so I will say, guys, I think it's time for us to like make a determination here. Like, do we feel, oh, my Coca-Cola spray bottle is leaking. Do we feel that you know, if I were to say to you uh, that food can be used as a hair product, is this a hack or is it a hoax? Okay. And I think that I'm ready to say that this is a hoax. Okay. We're not putting food into our hair, guys. It's food is food. Hair products are hair products. And there are exceptions to that. I am not the all seeing, all knowing being of the universe on these things. Um, but I do think that there, you know, in Wella Professionals, we offer you so many different options uh, to create uh, bespoke, uh, you know, treatment systems for your clients uh, that are much more worthy of taking advantage of than trying to, you know, make at home hair masks out of smelly things from your kitchen, right? Um, so all of that to say, we're going to call this one a hoax guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to again, say thank you to Wella Canada West for having me. I certainly appreciate, uh, you know, the time. I certainly appreciate everybody that joined us today. Uh, the next episode of Hacker Hoax is going to be on February 26th. Um, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and we're going to talk about, um, about hair growth, right? When, when I put it out to my team, I got a lot of things back about how can we make our hair grow faster and all of that kind of stuff. So the subject of my next hacker hoax on February 26th at Wella Canada West at 3 PM mountain time, uh, is there are ways to make your hair grow faster. Okay. And I'm going to do some experiments live and it's going to be sort of just like this Friday afternoon, you know, good way to sort of close out your week, unless you're a hairdresser and you have to work tomorrow. Um, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you guys learned anything today, please remember that you are not the owner of your knowledge. You're only the caretaker of it. And if you hoard it, it is wasted. Okay. Uh, stay safe out there guys, wash your hands and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Every time I wake up, I'm in the action